everybody, Deathbite here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ. Today I am talking about scholars. Now if you have read many Chinese fantasy novels, whether Wuxia or Xianxia, I think it's highly likely you have seen characters appear who are described as either being scholars or looking like scholars. So this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And of course, those of you who follow me and my work will know that the novel that got it all started for me, which is I Shall Steal the Heavens, the main character of that novel started out as a failed scholar and was always described as looking like a scholar throughout the novel. Whenever he wasn't a member of a particular sect or in a particular division of a sect with a specific uniform, his default clothing was always scholar clothing. And in other novels, these kind of characters appear. So I want to talk a little bit about them in this video. Now before getting started, I do have to point out this is not going to be some sort of in-depth historical explanation of what scholars were in Chinese society. The subject of what scholars were, how they fit into Chinese society is really, really complex. It could be the topic of a book, I'm sure it probably is already. And of course, Chinese has a history that goes back for thousands of years. So the exact role of scholars and how they worked and what they were like would change from time period to time period. But there is a kind of general perception that you will see in media, whether that's movies, TV shows, or the kind of novels that I translate. Now, to reinforce this point, I want to show you what happens when you look up scholar in the Chinese dictionaries. I use an app called Plico or Pleco. I've heard people pronounce it different ways. It's basically an app that is a suite of dictionaries, so you can have many dictionaries that you, some of which are free, some of which are purchased. I've purchased most of the dictionaries on the app because as a translator, I want to have as many references as possible. And I do use other dictionaries besides these, but this is the main app I use for looking up the words. When you look for a word, it will list the definitions from many different dictionaries. And so if you search for scholar, you pull up more than one definition. So what I did was I actually took screenshots. I scrolled through the list. I took screenshots. I went into Photoshop and I took out all of the irrelevant ones because there are things like idioms that reference scholars. There are a lot of general sort of adjectives that describe them, which I left some of those in, but I took a lot of them out. So essentially I pared down this list to what I felt was most relevant. It is actually pretty long. That's the kind of the point of why I did it. I want to show you how long it is. There could be some repetition in there. I didn't take time to literally go through every definition to make sure there wasn't a repetition from the top toward the bottom or something along those lines. And I originally envisioned reading them all to you, uh, either in Chinese or English, but I think that would take too long. So I'm going to put a little music on. I'm going to show you this list. And after you watch the list, you are going to understand why I say that it's a complex topic that I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about. So let's look at that list now. days later. So do you see what I mean? There are a lot of different words relating to scholars. Now, of course, some on that list were just kind of general adjectives used to describe scholars like a, a poor scholar or a wandering scholar. But there were also very specific different kinds of scholars, whether you have like the official scholars or the specific ranks that scholars could achieve when they took part in the imperial examination or whatever. I'll get into that in a minute. The point is just it's a really, really complex topic. Also, you will see these terms used in novels a lot, whether it's like xiu tai, which is a specific rank of scholar, or whether it's shu sheng, uh, which is a generic word for scholar, you'll see them all. And a lot of times there are gonna be different terms that could be translated as a scholar. So as with many of the other videos that I have done talking about specific Chinese words, it's gonna be difficult for you as a, an English reader to know specifically what type of scholar is being mentioned in Chinese when there are so many different words that could just be translated as scholar. So the two examples I just pointed out, Xiao Tai and, and Shu Sheng, those are the ones that I see the most often, but there are many others. The first one, Xiao Tai, as I mentioned, is a specific rank that a scholar could achieve. The other is just kind of a general term for somebody who is into learning. Now, again, I'm not going to get into a complex historical discussion, but I will describe essentially what scholars are, at least as they are perceived to the general public. Throughout history, scholars would be people who were men of learning. I do say men because for the most part, it would be males 
throughout Chinese history. They would study things like history and philosophy. There were also specific skills that they would foster. There were actually four very specific skills that they were known for. Those would essentially be music, painting, calligraphy, and the playing of Go, the game of Go, which is a strategy board game. These are kind of the four different arts that scholars would be good at. As they went through their studies, these ultimate goal of most scholars would be to become part of the imperial bureaucracy. So starting way back thousands of years ago and proceeding through many dynasties, there are different versions of these imperial examinations in which scholars would go to the capital or to some other place to take, depending on which part of the exa examination they were in, they would take a, an exam testing certain skills and abilities and their knowledge and then depending on how they perform in the test, they might be rewarded with an official rank in the government. And the people who scored top would obviously get the best positions. And at that point, you would become a government official. So basically, the goal of scholars in general was to become one of the government officials. That said, it was really hard to pass those tests. So a lot of people who would be scholars would be men of learning, people who studied and were skilled at different things, but didn't manage to make it into the imperial bureaucracy. And then they would become members of society. They might sell their services, for example, calligraphy, this is something you'll see in Wuxia movies a lot. You'll see these kind of like roving scholars who are obviously not part of the imperial bureaucracy, but are skilled at different things. And they're like wandering around part of the Jianghu, part of the martial arts world. And similar thing in Xianxia novels. And of course, people like that would have specific clothing that they would wear that would identify them, whether it's a style of hat or the style of clothing that they would wear. It would look scholarly. And so that's why in the novels, a lot of times you'll see a new character introduced and he'll, it will say he looks like a scholar or he's dressed in the clothes of a scholar. So that is the very high level kind of general understanding of what scholars are and again it's a very complicated subject that I don't claim to be an expert in if you are interested you can always do a little bit of research on your own whether it's online or there are plenty of books that you can find that talk about the history of China and you can learn more about what scholars were like whether they were the official members of the government or whether they were people who had failed to do that perfect example of course going back to what I mentioned earlier is the main character of I shall sell the heavens his name was Meng Hao, and he was a failed scholar. He took the exams over and over again and kept failing, not something that would happen in real life. There would be people who maybe for decades would try over and over again to try to pass those exams. It didn't matter when, when you pass them, if you were young, middle-aged, you could still get a government position, and that government position would come with a big income, lots of power and protection, and so of course it was a very coveted position. So that's it for this video. If you are a fan of these novels, what have you noticed in different novels about scholars or people who look like scholars? Do you have any observations that I missed? Do you have any favorite scholars? I'm pretty sure most of the people who follow me are gonna say Meng Hao, who is the main character of I Shall Sow the Heavens, but are there any other scholar characters that you have come across who are similarly cool or interesting? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. If you like my kind of content, please do like and subscribe. You can share the video, leave a comment. I really appreciate all of the comments. And of course, there are other ways to support the channel, which you can find in the description below. That's it for this video. I'll see you next time. God's love.